Shalom. Hi, I'm Dr. Marcus. I'm super excited to be with you again during Westside Christian Academy's Summer Session 2022. Our theme is Get Connected, Stay Connected with God. And our connecting verse is in, found in John chapter 15, verse 5. And it reads, Jesus speaking, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain and stay connected in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. That is nothing with an eternal spiritual benefit. During this session, we're going to look at how to stay connected to our creator, the real God. The Bible starts with, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth had no shape and was empty, and darkness covered the deep waters, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. In order to do that, God had to first create space for heaven and earth to go, matter so that there'd be substance, and time to have a beginning. This means our Creator, the real God, exists outside space, matter, and time. I know this might be hard to understand, so check this out. God is outside space, time, and matter because he created them. However, everything that exists, he made inside space, time, and matter. This means you are inside space, time, and matter, and this means we can't fully understand everything. Now, some people will try to explain it with science, but science helps us understand what's inside space, time, and matter, not what's outside of it. Now, check this out. Let's look at what God did in six 24-hour days. Day one, he spoke, and light, which he called day, came to be. Day two, he spoke, and this space called a firmament, which he called sky, came to be. Day three, he spoke, and waters gathered together, and dry land, which he called earth, could be seen. Day four, he spoke, and the sun, moon, and stars were placed in the sky. Day five, he spoke, and creatures that could swim, like goldfish, sharks, and whales, fill the waters, and flying creatures like robins and pigeons and eagles fill the sky. Day six, he spoke, and the earth produced animals like um, caterpillars, uh, bears, and giraffes, and they lived on the land. Lastly, he said that he'd make mankind or humanity in his image and likeness to rule over and govern all that he made. Now, remember how I said in the beginning, God created all things, including humans? Well, sadly, some humans created their own God. And there are so many, it makes it hard for people to know, well, well now who is the real God? Well, here are three things that will help us know to know who the real God is. One, you need to know that the Bible was originally written in the Hebrew language, then translated into English for us. The reason this is important is because God's name in the Hebrew language actually means he exists. The first thing we need to know is God does exist. He's not a figment of our imagination. He's not based on a fable. And he's not a fictional character. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 13, uh, Moses was having a conversation with God. And he says, well, what if people ask me who you are? What do I tell them? God told Moses, tell them the existing one has sent you. He wants everyone to know God that sent Moses to do what he did and the God that wants us to do things today is the existing one. Second, he rules heaven and earth, and there's no God like him in heaven or on earth. In Psalm 103, verse 19, we read that the Lord has made the heavens his throne, 
from there, he rules everything. And in the book called Second Chronicles, chapter 6, verse 14, Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived, while he was praying, said, O Lord, God of Israel, there's no God like you in all of heaven and earth. You keep your covenant and you show unfailing love to all who walk before you in wholehearted devotion. Now listen, to walk before God means to follow the instructions he gives us to live by wholeheartedly. Thirdly, he calls his son Jesus. Yes, that is his son. On the day Jesus was being baptized, a voice from heaven said, this is my son. The only person to really speak from heaven at this time would have been God. When Jesus was asked if he was, are you the real God's son? Well, in the book of Mark, chapter 14, verses 61 and 62, when he was asked that question, he said, yes. They got a little upset with him because they didn't like that, but it was true. That's why he said yes. Thirdly, Yeshua called the real God his father. In Luke chapter 10, verse 22, it mentions where he's referring to him as his father as he's praying his father while he was on earth. You'll find that in Luke chapter 10, verse 22. So once you've identified the real God, the question is, how do you connect? Connecting to God begins with an invitation. The real God invites you to get connected and stay connected with him through his son, Jesus. The invitation begins with a promise. In the book of Exodus, chapter 19, verses 5 and 6, we find it saying, If you'll obey me and keep my covenant, you'll be my own special treasure. From among all the peoples on the earth, for all the earth belongs to me, and you will be my kingdom of priests my holy nation. If you're going to connect and stay connected with me, God is saying, you'll need to live your life according to the instructions I give you. This means you may need to change some things that you do, but I'll work with you on that. Secondly, look at what Jesus has to say. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. He wants us to know if we want to get to know the real God, he is the only one who can help us do that. And you'll see why. Here's the main point. It's found in a very, very popular Bible verse in the book of John, chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son, that would be Jesus. So everyone who believes in him, will not perish, but have eternal life. God sent his world into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. Would you like to get connected with God right now? If you want to get connected with God, tell one of your teachers today. Don't hesitate. Don't wait. Raise your hand and tell them, I want to know more about connecting with God. And when you're ready to do that, you can pray something like what you see here. Oh God, our creator and father, thank you for creating me and wanting me to have eternal life. I understand you sent your son Jesus for me to believe in. You didn't send him to point out everything I haven't done right, but as my only way to get to you. I'm willing to believe in him and follow how he teaches me to live starting today. Thank you for helping me get connected to you. Boys and girls, it's not the prayer that connects you to God. It's what you practice after you pray. Now, if you've connected with God through his son, Jesus, by believing in him and starting to follow him, this makes you one of his disciples. Please ask your teacher to let me know because I want to celebrate that good news. Remember, Jesus is the vine, we're the branches. He wants us to bear a whole lot of good fruit in our lives. Until next time, shalom.